What's going on, guys? And what, welcome back to. Whoa, dude! I am. I'm rusty on the intros. What's going on, guys? And welcome back to a brand new video. This is Web Dev Journey, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the readable streams counterpart, which is the writable stream, and also back pressure. But before we get into that, guys, I do want to say Happy New Year's, and I hope you had a very, very good one on your side as well. And I don't think I ever said this, but uh. Happy or Merry Christmas, Merry Late Christmas, I guess. Very late Christmas. It's not late, right? Like six days, six, seven days, right? Right? Right. All right. Anyways, um, yeah, so Happy New Year's, guys, and let's just get back into the video. So in today's video, we're going, to, like I said, we're going to be doing a writable stream and also back pressure. That's what we're going to be talking about. And just like the readable stream, writable streams are everywhere. HTTP client requests. And server responses are writable streams. The file system has writable stream. Process that st dot stud out and stud error are writable streams. And just like again, readable streams, writable writable streams are published in countless NPMs. So it's very important to understand writable streams as well. That's going to become a tongue twister for me later on, saying writable a lot. Okay. So, anyways, let's just get on with this. So this file right here is basically the same file that we did with the uh, readable FS. The only difference is that I did, I destructured the uh, create restream from the FS because we're going to be grabbing the create write stream from that as well. And just like if, if create restream is reading from a file, write stream is going to be writing to a file, to a specific file, right? So let's just get that out of the way. So we're going to get the write, well, it's create right stream. There you go. We're going to grab that and then we're also going to create that. So, well, let me just copy this over, right? We're going to do a read stream, copy D it's going to be right. Oh, right stream. There it is. We're going to be creating a right stream. So I did a right stream, create right stream, right stream, and also since we're right into a data, this is basically, you're just going to give it a destination on where you actually want to, you know, write the data to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I want to write the data in the current folder and I'm going to copy, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to name it copy dot MP four. Well, dot MP four. So what we're going to be doing is literally copying this anime dancing MP four and just copying that to this file called the copy dot MP four. That's all we're going to be doing. Okay. So as you know, restreams are designed to read bits of data once one chunk at a time, whereas write streams are designed are designed to write bits of data one chunk at a time. So instead of county logging the chunk length, all we're going to be doing is writing that chunk to that um, copy.mp4. So all we have to do right here is just say write stream dot write because we're going to be writing right. So write. And we're going to be writing the chunk being passed in. So chunk, there you go. Right now, once the read stream, it does end instead of logging that end, what we want to say that, Hey, since the read stream ended, we want to tell the write stream, Hey, there's nothing being read no more. So we just want you to end. So write, oop, write stream dot end. That's how you just end it. No, not without an error. Just like so, right? I'll get rid of this because I'll, I'll, I'll copy the error. Anyways, there you go. <laughs> now, just like just like Restream has event listeners, WriteStream also has event listeners. So in this case, let's say that, hey, we want to do something once the WriteStream ends. So we're going to say WriteStream.on and it's called close. So once the WriteStream closes, what we want to do is, I don't know, console log uh, file copied. But instead of console logging, we're actually going to be doing process dot uh std out stud out i don't know why i said std out stud out or a standard output standard output standard output so stud out this is actually just going to be a it's a write stream right it's a write stream so it's going to write stuff to the council we could just use this and matter of fact council log just wraps around process dot stud out to write your streams if you did not know that so yeah Anyways, we're going to just do write and say file copied slash slash new line, new line. And there we go. 
Control save this. Now, if we run this file using node, I'm gonna say node, uh, what was it called? Writable stream or writable.js. You don't see anything, we just see file copied, but you are going to see that copy.mp4. And if I do click, on, well, let me actually open this. Uh, review on file explorer there it is so if i do open this it's going to be i'm oh, sorry about that god damn it it is going to be that little see that there so right there copy god where is it at right there copy line before and this is just the exact same file or exact same uh video that we had so now that we have writable streams you know well, we know a little bit about writable streams and how to write stuff. Let's talk about back pressure, right? So sometimes the data coming from the readable stream is too fast for a writable stream to handle. Using our water bucket, uh, you know, example. Wait, where's my pen at? I got it. Got it right here. So let, let's go back to that water, uh, you know, example. So let's say that we have that little destination bucket over here. Right, this is a destination bucket, and we also have a little funnel with a pipe going through it, right? And here we're pouring in the bucket of the source, right? Our data. So we're pouring in, let me see, we're pouring in this bucket in here, and let's say that it's full, right? This hose is full, it can't take no more. What should we, st what, what, what should, what, wait, <laughs> sorry, what should we do, right? Should we keep on pouring and let it overflow? No, that's, that's pretty bad, right? So what we do is actually just stop. Let me get rid of this stuff. What we, we just stop pouring and then they wait until this water goes to our destination. Now, once this is empty, what we could do is keep on pouring, right? We keep on pouring water. And whenever we actually have a full hose right here, this is referred to as back pressure. And how much water our hose can handle is referred to as the high water mark, okay? Um, and we can make our hose, you know, bigger. It, like I said, it, it's referred to ha the high wa water mark, and we could just make that bigger or the size that we wanted to. We could make it where it could like fit everything in. We could make that hose extremely big if we wanted to. But like I said, your memory is gonna take a very huge hit. So, you know, understanding back pressure and high watermarks is very, very important as well. So that's why we're gonna be talking about this. So let me just delete all of this and let's just get right into it again. And we're gonna give it some examples using code, obviously. So what I'm gonna do is just copy all of this. I'm gonna just make a new file. We're gonna call this the um, back pressure. Dot js so that way it's very different even though it's going to be almost the exact same thing i do want you to have a reference of the back pressure now write stream that write actually tells it can tell us if our hose is full or not if we capture the result let's say the const const result we're gonna we're gonna uh, capture the result and if we capture it, it's going to return a true or false value false meaning that our hose is full. So false means our hose is full. It cannot take, uh, it cannot take, um, what's it called? Any more data or any more water, right? And by the way, you could check if you're having, if you have back pressure, just copying this MP4, you could check uh, if you do have back pressure by looking at your memory. Like I said, this is all memory related. It's going to take a big hit on memory basically everything does right but this is going to be a very big hit and you can just see if this uh, node process is using a ton of ton of memory if it is that means that you do have back pressure if it's not then um, you have some back pressure like uh, what's it called like solution in your in your code this is what we're going to be doing creating a kind of a back pressure solution where if it's if it's too full it's going to stop reading right so let's just let's just get on to the video and you'll see what I'm talking about right so right now we're just capturing the result true or false false means that uh the hose is full and right now we're going to say if if it is false like a uh, result there is no result right so if it's false it's going to turn into true so if it is false then what we want to do is i'm gonna log out right now for right now log damn it log there we go counter log i'm gonna say back pressure and what we want to do is pause the restream. Since it is full, 
we want to pause restream. So restream dot pause right there, right? And there is an event that you could use on the right stream. So like, remember that little um, example of the water hose once the drain or once the hose is completely washed out, meaning that all the data is already into the destination, when can we start pouring back, right? And we could actually use a uh, event listener to check that out and that's called drain. So I'm gonna say right stream dot on and if the hose is drained, so drain, if it's completely empty, our hose, what we want to do is, I'm gonna just, again, I'm gonna just, oops, I'm gonna log out, log, dude, I'm burping, log, uh, drained. And we want to do is resume our restream. So read stream dot resume. There we go, right? And now we could check that out and see if it's all good or not. So if we clear this out, and do node back pressure, you're gonna see that we have a ton of back pressure. Look at all this back pressure, right? Basically what this is, it depends on how you look at it, right? For me, this is pretty good because we're using less memory. Get rid of this. So if you have a lot of back pressure, that means that your, uh, your memory isn't going to be used as much, right? So it's stopping the restream, meaning stopping, not not memory intensive no more and then just waiting until the right stream is able and then pouring back in right so this could save your memory now like i said if you don't really care about memory you have all the memory in the world uh you you could actually set that high water mark like we talked about right how thick our hose is and you could do that in the create restream right you could pass in an option so what we're going to be doing right here is saying hey uh what we want is to set our high water mark and this is going to be red in bits. So I'm gonna just do a very large number. I have no idea. I'm gonna just, you know, type in some stuff. That uh, That's good enough, right? Let's just, let's call it this, right? So if I control save this right now and rerun that same uh, back pressure, you're gonna see that, hey, we don't have that much back pressure. You see that right there? That's because our high watermark, how thick our hose is, is very, very thick and it could like, you know, drain it super fast. Uh, but this, like I said, this is going to be more memory intensive. If I take out some, let's just take out a couple of numbers or, you know, just like that. I have no idea, right? Let's do it one more time. Well, that's a little bit too much. So let's, uh, let's, uh, go into, I don't know, something like that. Let's see if we could, uh, I'm trying to give you a good example, a good example of something. Well, you know what I mean, right? I'm trying, I can't think of a number right now, but anyways, you know what I mean? The higher, the higher, the higher number, the high, high water mark is, the thicker the hose is going to be, right? And remember, this is just bits. So the more bits you put into the high water mark, the thicker the hose is, and the more memory you're going to be using, obviously, because you're basically just saying, hey, uh, once we read, we really just want it to go to, we want it to uh, flow uh, pretty, pretty steadily, right? We don't want it to have back pressure or we don't want you to stop reading. We want you to just keep on going, right? If you have a lower number, lower bits, that means that hey, we want you to just, you know, resume or do the back pressure. But matter of fact, if you just take this out, you don't even have to add this in. This will actually just default to uh, e memory efficiency. Ma basically, it's going to save your memory a ton, right? So if I do back pressure again, you're gonna see all these back pressures. It's, it's a lot, it's a lot of back pressure, right? So again, without setting this high watermark, uh, we don't want to take up too much memory with our application, so we could handle that through handling back pressure. That means pausing our restream until our right stream is ready to handle more data. And that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, learned something new. Um, hit, hit, hit that like button, subscribe, comment down below. And like I said, Happy New Year's, guys. Um, thank you for watching my videos. I really do appreciate that and expect more. I really wanted to start off this New Year's with a new series, but I didn't even finish this one, so I'm super sorry about that, guys. Uh, you know, I had to just, we had to do family stuff, right? So <laughs> we just left without even telling you guys anything. So I'm super sorry about that. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for um, 
for watching my videos. Um, stick around because it's going to get more and more interesting. Obviously, we're going to have more and more series. So um, happy New Year's, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.